Um, yeah, I have the greatest job on two planets. Um, basically, um, uh, the way it works is uh, um, the orbits are too far away for us to control them interactively. Um, because even at the speed of light, if you push forward on the joystick and the plants are as close to each other as they get, it's four minutes before the rover receives your signal. And it's another four minutes before you see what actually happened as a result of that. So you can imagine we don't drive the rovers around with the joystick. Um, instead, the rover shut down for the night. Uh, we go to work, we actually uh, have a 3D model, like a computer game, and then drive a simulated rover around inside of that model. When we get the simulated rover doing what we want the real rover to do, we take all the commands that we made to do that, we send it up to the real rover, and the real, real rover clocks out for the next day. So in a sense, I'm kind of driving a simulated rover around, but then we take that simulation, we turn it into reality on Mars the next day. So every night you write a program that the next day the rover executes to get to That's exactly wherever right. you're going. That's exactly right. Yeah, um, and uh, we have to get that program exactly right. And the, the great thing, the, 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 the fun part about the job is you have to do this all without seeing the results of any of it. So in a, uh, you know, part of the art of the job is applying some guesswork to know that the simulation says this is going to happen, but really that is going to happen. What happens like if the terrain changes? Um, and and it's, it's driving about, it's executing your driving program, and then all of a sudden it hits some Martian quicksand or something. Well, that's part of the fun of it, part of the fun of exploration. We've actually hit uh, Martian quicksand on a couple of occasions. Um, fortunately, the rovers are pretty smart, and uh, um, uh, because, you know, this is why we call it exploration, we find stuff like this, and we develop techniques that allow the rovers to every once in a while stop and say, hey, am I stuck? If I'm stuck, let me just shut down for the day and like let my human operators come back and help me the next day. Uh, does it have anything like feelers or anything that goes out ahead before it gets all of its weight on the surface? Um, no, we don't have anything like that. We just charge right ahead blindly and kind of hope for the best. So, now, they're making another rover that they're actually going to send up tomorrow. That's correct. Yeah. Like, if you were building the next rover yourself, what would you add to it that the current rover doesn't have, being from the driver's seat? Well, happily, um, they actually added uh, at least one of the things that I wanted, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but it's something we, we really like to have, and that's a belly camera to actually be able to look directly under the rover and see what's immediately underneath you. Like a glass bottom boat, huh? Uh, like a glass bottom boat, yeah, it's a great analogy. Um, so our rovers can see immediately ahead of them and immediately behind them, but it's really tough to see what's right exactly underneath the rover. And so happens this next rover has what's called uh, MARTI, the Mars Descent Imager. It's actually gonna take pictures all the way down, um, but once it's actually down on the surface, that camera still works and it will still be able to get pictures of what's actually underneath the rover. So, so fortunately, one of the items on my uh, you know, kind of top three list uh, for what should be the next rovers is actually on the rover. Huh. Um, the other one is, um, another one that's, that's on the rovers, is um, uh, one of the things I really wanted was a faster CPU. So these rovers, our Mars Exploration rovers, have a 20 megahertz uh, PowerPC clone CPU. So this would have been a great state-of-the-art computer around 1984. Uh, but as you can imagine, uh, anything where the rover has to actually stop and think, it's fine, just thinks very slowly, it takes several minutes. Um, the next rover, one of the great things about the next rover is they sped it up by about a factor of five or six. Um, so it's actually going to be able to think, you know, not quickly, not as fast as the machine that you would go down and, you know, pick off the shelf at your local computer store, but still much more quickly than our rovers. So, so things are kind of heading for me in the right direction. Yeah, that sounds pretty neat. Um, you know, I was just thinking, maybe you guys can make sort of like a, a rover dock for the iPad. Because <laughs> it has cameras and, you know, you could kind of drive it around and... Uh, save a lot of money. <laughs> uh, well, you know, one of the great things about that would be tilt controls, right? You can like tilt your it's iPhone, got the iPad, or something, or like move your rover. Well, yeah, well, you could use the iPhone as the remote control for the rover iPad dock. We've, we've actually talked about that. We've, uh, we've explored alternate input functionality for our software, for our rover driving software. And one of the things we've explored is actually taking uh, the remote controls for the Wii game console mm -hmm. and like using those and kind of motion controls to move the rovers around and so forth. Uh, so, so far we're still kind of starting to be great for the arm, right? Um, yeah, yeah, you can imagine like that you would be able to reach out and touch the arm. You could just put on like the old Nintendo glove. From the <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> oh, we'd love to do that. Unfortunately, our time is limited to, to, to actually uh, implement those, that functionality. <laughs> but uh, maybe we need idea people like you to come and work for us and uh, kind of give us some of those ideas and we'll turn them into reality. Oh, sure, man. Anything we can do to help you out. Thanks a lot for talking <laughs> about